Hey folks, Sebastian from Madrigal here. Welcome to this completely unscripted video. I was gonna sit down to work and I figured well, let's make a video out of it. Um, for those of you who have been following me and my channel for a while, uh, you probably know that I'm working on a game called Project Slide. Uh, it's the, the project name for the game. Actual game is gonna be called something else. Uh, and it looks something like this. And uh, you also probably know that I'm using my own game engine for this. So it's a game engine called Basis, and uh, it's completely self-made. And it's one of the sort of pillars of the whole project to see what I can build with my own tech. Um, and this game engine is uh, not what you would call state of the art. Um, it's a, obviously much simpler than the big guys out there, considering it's made by one guy. And uh, some of these systems that I have in place here are uh, perhaps what you might consider old-fashioned by now. The thing is that I can't rewrite things uh, and try to stay sort of state-of-the-art all the time. Because as a solo dev, it takes quite a long, long time to actually build things. And uh, I have to sort of settle on a technique or a technology and then and then use that even though it's not it's not something that uh, that is considered to be the newest and hottest tech and one of these things um, that have sort of fallen behind a little bit is the game object model that I'm using for the engine so um, the basis engine uses a very um, shall we say traditional game object model um, it might remind you a little bit of the game object model that's found in Unity uh, with the old game object system. So, if we open the editor and uh, we look at what we have here, we have, uh, uh, let's take, uh, do we have any cars? Yeah, we have a car here. Uh, yeah, the performance is a bit choppy because we're calculating the lighting, the light probes. Anyway, uh, if we select this guy, we, we get a whole lot of components that are, are bolted onto the thing like this. You can see we have like uh, 30, 40 components like this, and it's a game object. Um, one special thing about this uh, about this engine is that game objects are, are created from, from something called an object type. So you don't have to actually, and, and indeed you don't get to just drop components here like like Unity does, instead they're sort of pre-packaged into these sort of uh, named collections. That then, then makes the runtime a, a, a bit uh, different to work with compared to the Unity styles. I apologize if this is difficult to read, by the way. I can't really enlarge this uh, for the YouTube video, but nevertheless. So this is a some this is a system that's not really it's not really considered state of the art anymore. Today you have you have uh, ECS, which is kind of beginning to to become the the standard uh, game object model, so to speak. And what is ECS? Well, ECS is essentially um, a different way to structure your data and, and code. I'm, I'm sure you can find lots and lots of videos on YouTube if you if you don't know what that means. Um, videos that explain it better than me. But rather than having um, an object with components. Uh, sort of attached to it like this. Uh, you essentially just have lists of components in memory. And then you have entities that are really just identifiers, letting the system know which components belong to which entities. As I've been looking at, at that, um, sort of in my spare time, if you will, um, and I found this very interesting looking uh, a library called uh, ENTT. I think it's supposed to be pronounced entity, but that's that's a little confusing. I, I'm not sure if I if I agree with the naming here, but um, I've heard some people call it ENT, so let's call it ENT to sort of uh, distinguish it from from the entity concept. And ENT is a, an MIT licensed um, 
open source uh, library, which contains, among other things, um, an entity component system. So um, I started thinking like, hmm, how, how much would it actually take for me to to just drop this in and uh, integrate it with with the basis engine? Um, and that's not something that you can really do to an existing project like Project Slide. Um, like I already have have levels like this set up and, and everything working pretty nicely already. So I don't want to go messing with this project. Um, but luckily, the basis engine is, is it's, it's not as handy to use for different projects as something like Unity or Unreal or, or any any third party engine. But it, it's still pretty easy to just create a new project. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, we can go to Visual Studio. Um, I'm not going to enlarge the fonts here, unfortunately, because I'm, I'm actually going to try to get some work done. So I, I apologize if this text is a little small, but um, uh, I'll, I'll upload the video at full resolution. So hopefully you can follow along if you're interested. So what we have here is Visual Studio. Um, there's this new project group here called Hermes. This is a project name. Uh, I'm not sure if this is ever going to be anything, but... Uh, it's it's a way for me to play around with TCS and seeing what what is the thing about. <clears throat> so uh, it's split up into into three um, projects here, uh, and the reason is that um, I want actually I want like a command line program that I can just use to to test this out without having to start up the whole game or app, if you will. Uh, so that's a, a main CPP, but it's, if 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 you look at it, it's just literally just a, a to-do line here. It doesn't really do anything. Then we have Hermes Game, which also has a main CPP. Uh, let's see if we can enlarge this. And uh, and this is very sort of boilerplate stuff. This is whatever, essentially whatever goes into any basis main uh, CPP file. So the, the interesting parts here are really just these four lines. Like we create a Hermes app, we start it up, we run it, and we shut it down. So that's essentially the whole lifetime of a basis application. And everything else is, is really just boilerplate code getting the application up and running. And the actual code for the new project is here in this Hermes game lib. <clears throat> so the idea is that both Hermes game and Hermes command line can just reference this guy. Um, and, and and run the simulation. Right. So, what is the simulation that I keep referring to? Um, let's see if I can if I can draw this out to you. So, a basis application is typically uh, it consists of uh, you have a client here. Uh, so, a client, and then you have a, a server on the other side. And, and these um, these talk to each other over the, the the network. So in a single player game, and Hermes is supposed to be mostly a single player game. Um, this network connection here is actually faked. So fake. And uh, the reason we we still use a network connection, a client and a server, is that you can you can write your uh, your gameplay code essentially to work over the network in a multiplayer game if you just stri stick to some conventions and rules. Um, and, and the client and server, they, they by default they run in different threads so you can't just go like from, from here just um, over to that side. It's like no no no, bad, don't do that. Instead you have to use the uh, established uh, protocols to, to communicate between these two. And this is, of course, uh, this is like game object land. So game, game object, and uh, and so this is the way the the old school Unity stuff works, for example. So how do I want to actually? Um, how do I want to fit ECS into this whole thing? Well, I was thinking. Um, it's probably a pretty good idea to 
to keep this system around because it's it's kind of built into the whole game engine and level editor and everything. Um, and it's a very handy way for me to just get data into the game. So let's let's uh, let's give this a name. Let's call this presentation because th this is what is actually going to be visible on the screen. So that's the presentation layer. But we want the actual gameplay to be ECS. So we we have another layer here beneath the, the line that we call simulation. And the idea is that the, uh, the simulation is kind of independent from the presentation. Like we can run the simulation layer uh, without the presentation. It doesn't care if, if, if nothing gets rendered to the screen. It, it, it just runs. Um, so here we have um, we have this box uh, which we call the entity component system. Um, and and the box is is owned by the server. So so it, it sits on this side of the network. And uh, and here we can create an entity, another entity, um, and so on, and uh, and we can have you know components like this of different types, different types of components in, in lists, and then we have uh, we have systems. So we have a system doing something which is also connected to the ECS. We have another system doing something else, um, and this ECS thing is, is sort of managing the whole the whole flow of data. And um, how do we then communicate between uh, the simulation and the presentation? Well, you can you can have this ECS layer uh, notify, like advertise when something interesting happens. So there can be like a, a, a like this exclamation mark here, uh, like an event that gets ad advertised and it gets sort of fed to the server because the server, the game object layer server is kind of interested in, in, in what the ECS is doing. So when this when this uh, ECS layer creates an entity, uh, we can sort of feed this information to the server. Uh, the server creates the, the, the new entity, so it creates like a, a new game object here game object appears boom and, and then of course through through the classical means that stuff gets sent over to the client and and finally you get the game object on this side which is actually a, a, you know, visible on the screen for the player so this is my plan um, this is mostly just to um, to educate myself on how easiest things are, are done uh, because I, I haven't used that all that much and uh, I think this should be a pretty interesting way to to architect a game uh, what I like in particular about this is is like I said that we, we can just run this this uh, this easiest completely without the presentation and uh, another um, design decision that I made is that the simulation is going to be deterministic. So what does that mean? Well, it means essentially that um, if you run the game once and you record the input for every frame, so you have you have a, a frames like this, and for every frame, my time progresses downwards here. For every frame. Uh, you have you have some like some input of the player. There's some key presses there. Um, maybe there's essentially nothing on this frame, and then here there's again some some key presses and things. You record a list of these and store them. Uh, you can then start the game again, and for for every frame, or for every um, update or tick, shall we say, we just feed the same inputs to the simulation again and, and and you will end up exactly where you were before. So that's the idea of the of the of the simulation layer here. Um, and that 
allows us to do some very cool things like uh, fast forward uh, a previously played game session uh, on the simulation side and verify that the game state is exactly uh, bit by bit the same as it was before. Um, and for example, that that allow that would allow you to to make automated testing very easily, things like that. Uh, and and the presentation side is is not deterministic. It, like it, it's it's wildly un undeterministic even. Um, but it doesn't matter uh, because we can run this ECS uh, completely without the presentation layer. It doesn't even need to be there. And and even if it is, it it doesn't care if the presentation isn't exactly what it was the last time. The the, the important thing is that the ECS, which contains the actual game state is deterministic um, and that should that should allow for some very interesting things uh, in the future and that's why I have this uh, this command line app here uh, this guy that we looked at uh, and this is supposed to essentially um, skip this whole presentation thing you know just leave this this part out completely and so these these events aren't going anywhere this ECS is still doing its thing doesn't even know if there's a presentation or not, um, but that would allow you to to simulate the game and verify that everything works. Uh, you know, run it as fast as you can, like run it a hundred times faster than it originally was played. Um, fast forward, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's some pretty interesting things. Um, Right, I have some other ideas as well, but let's not let's not go too deep into into uh, rambling land. Let's actually try to do some work. Right, so let's quickly have a look at what what this Hermes game lib contains. Um, most of this is actually um, just boilerplate code, uh, things that you 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 need <clears throat> to actually have. An app in in basis. So if we uh, if we set the game as the start lib, or start start startup project. Sorry, <clears throat> we should be able to run this, um, and and we don't currently. Yes, and I know why. It's because because we're not actually loading any physics back end. <clears throat> So we just need to add this, even though we're not going to use uh, physics in this project, and that's why it was commented out. We, we still need to load the backend currently. That's something that I'm going to have to actually fix at some point. Right. So here we are in our beautiful app. Um, it doesn't look like anything because we're essentially in in the client ma main menu state currently, um, and maybe we can actually. Maybe something will actually happen if I press enter here. I'm not, I'm not actually rendering anything. But we have a, a test level that we can go into. Here we go. Here's the, my, my beautiful test level that I created just to have something. So it's this um, disappearing sphere that I created uh, as part of the as part of another video. Go go find it if you want. It's on the YouTube channel as well. Um, and uh, and the terrain. And we just have a free camera. Um, so you have that, uh, but you don't get it for free. You have to actually copy some things over from from earlier uh, projects. So we have like a, a camera director, even though we're not really using it. We have a we have a sound manager, even though we're not really using it. Uh, the free camera director we did actually just use. Um, there's some messages. Uh, there's the Hermes app, which is the one that we looked at uh, in the in the main file earlier. Some localization, localization things and, and things like that. Player controllers, not really using them currently. Uh, let's get back to the external folder uh, a bit later. So fixed point math. This is something that um, that uh, is new. And, and it's because of the deterministic uh, simulation layer. So floating points, floating point values are kind of tricky to get deterministic and uh, nowadays, it uh, you can you can do some things to make them deterministic, but um, it it's a bit risky to if if you really want your simulation to be deterministic, then um, floating points are kind of risky to use because you can you can very easily break your 
your determinism if you're using them wrong. So I decided that, okay, the simulation will actually not use any floating points. Instead, we use uh, fixed point math. Um, and if you don't know what fixed point is, it, it's essentially <clears throat> like floating points. The whole idea of floating points is that they can sort of dynamically adjust their accuracy for fractional digits. Uh, and fixed point, you you sort of specify up front whatever you want. So um, here I have a, a very, very simple... Uh, like beginnings of, of, of a fixed point setup. Um, I'm using a, a library called FPM, which we, we can look at in one second. Um, but this fixed point type here that I have um, in my fixed point vector three. So we have fixed point X, Y, and Z. And uh, fixed point is really just an alias for fixed point 48, 16. And that, that means that, that we're using 64 bit integers uh, rather than. Uh, floating points. So 48 bits of those go to the uh, like integral part and 16 bits go to the fractional parts. So you have to sort of, you have to decide, okay, how large are my largest numbers going to be and how much accuracy um, uh, do I need? So this is essentially like, okay, the more bits you put into, like obviously these two uh, summed together needs to be 64. But you're sort of splitting splitting them up, so this tells you how large your numbers can be, and this tells you how much accuracy you have. So, this is my kind of guesstimate currently. That okay, maybe 48 bits for the size and 16 for the accuracy. And yeah, FPM is another um, another MIT licensed open source library, uh, which looks very cool. So I decided to use this rather than make my own. And and both of these, uh, both uh, int, ENTT and FPM, they, they, they are only available here on this side. Uh, the presentation doesn't really know or care about them. I mean, they can use them because they're in the same project. But, but the presentation can use floating points. It doesn't need to be deterministic. Anyway, uh, we were going through the, the files here. I, I, I created some fixed point... Uh, versions of like quaternions, vectors, uh, even some matrices. Uh, yeah, so they're essentially just almost like copy pasted, but, but they're using this fixed point uh, data members. Like I could have templated versions of these that you could just use a fixed point uh, um, template parameter, but I'm gonna need need to do some some changes anyway, so. So I just I copied them over. You have some game flow. No, it's not very interested. Things like basis engine needs to to work. And some game objects. Uh, we don't actually have almost any. We have client end game logic, server end game logic, and game master logic, and then some RPC boilerplate that goes with them. So uh, if you watched my previous videos, you might know that in basis there's a there's a concept called the game master. Um, which is essentially like it's a component that that gets pushed to an, a game object when the game is loaded and it sort of keeps track of that game session and it can decide, okay, the game is over, um, for example. But it also handles things like message received, when the game starts, uh, we, we try to, to spawn a player avatar, for example, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and when, when a player leaves in a multiplayer game, we destroy its its avatar if it has one, and things like that. So we have that, um, and uh, yeah, then we have we have some some new interesting things. So we have transform module. So here is um, here's the very beginning of my ECS code essentially. Um, rather than having, uh, let's look at the transform transform uh, component in the in the basis game engine so uh, we have a lot of them we have like the base class here we have a static body transform uh, that's a command we have a physics transform we have a gizmo we have a dynamic body we have a constraint transform and we have a character transform and then there's an old character capsule transform which is not used but they, they all they all like derive from this component and you can see how like how large even the the base is. 
um, and if you go to CPP, we have we have even more even more things. And then you have things like the dynamic body transform component, which is like huge, um, just to be a transform component. This is like 446 lines of of things. So lots of things in one component. And uh, in the new system, this is the transform component. It's a struct and it has a matrix and that's it essentially. So components tend to be very very small in ECS and then you just you have like separate functions uh, called systems that operate and do things to those. So this is my first component here. Yay! And uh, then I have uh, this folder called sim and um, so this contains the simulation class. This is essentially the main, uh, the main container for the whole ECS system. And this registry here, um, this is exactly that. So this is an, an ENTT ENT basic registry for these entity types. This is essentially like the whole entry point to the to the ENT library. And uh, there's some really good documentation here if you want to if you want to like want to see how this works uh, but um, but it essentially always starts with this registry like int main you create a registry and then you start poking things into it that's how you use this library and uh, in 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 the Hermes project uh, it's it's contained here in the simulation so we, we can tick it and I've commented this out for now because I don't have it actually still, but but I talked about the the idea that we have this input snapshot that we just like feed to the tick every frame. What did the what did the user do during this uh, during this tick? Um, and it, it it would be encapsulated in this input snapshot. Then we have uh, one more one more idea here that I had um, in in this whole thing. Like the simulation is deterministic, yes. But that's not that's not enough for me because I'm megalomaniac. Um, so rather than than um, or in addition to being deterministic, I want to I want to have the simulation so that you can rewind it uh, and, and sort of you can play the game for a bit and then you can like jump back and forth uh, doing what you had done. So you could go back like two seconds and then resume the game from there. Um, I'm not sure I'm actually going to use that in gameplay, but I want it for development at least. And and it would be interesting to, to make a system like that. <clears throat> so, because of that, whenever we run this tick, um, uh, whenever, whenever we run a tick, which updates essentially the whole game simulation, all the modifications that's done to, to components and and the state of the game. They need to be, they need to be uh, done through something called a command. And a command is essentially just a modification that's wrapped up in an object. So I have a, I have a command struct here already, but it doesn't contain anything yet. But the idea is that that during this tick, you know, you, you can't you can't just go and and like poke at a component and change its value. Instead, you have to uh, run a command that does that thing. And the command can then undo the thing later. So here we have these undo tick and redo tick functions. Uh, let's see how this pans out. I'm not not, not sure it's actually going to be feasible to, to create a game this way, but uh, I'm going to give it a try anyway. And so the idea is that uh, before you start ticking a, a simulation, you, you've created it, and then then you can call this set command buffer and give it a buffer. And the idea here is that like you give it a buffer that it can write all the commands that it uh, has executed when when you start calling this tick function. And then later, if it has a command buffer and it has written something to it, you can call this undo tick, and it will just go back one update, revert all the game state to one update ago. And then, of course, you can redo the ticks, in which case it will just uh, re-execute all of those modifications. And uh, and again, this presentation thing doesn't need to know anything about this whole system. It doesn't even need to know that that um, that it 
it's a it's a feature in the whole game. Like it just receives these notifications from the ECS and uh, and destroys and moves, destroys and creates and moves objects around uh, according to to that. So that's the idea. Okay, I think that's probably enough introduction for now. So I'm at a point now where I I have this simulation. Uh, and I've, I've written some some test code here just to like play around with with things, um, but this simulation doesn't really get created anywhere uh, at this point. So we need we need like a home for it. And of course I could just I could just like put it here right in the uh, in the Hermes app, uh, like a, as a member here, and then just start taking it. But that's not really that's not really a nice way to do it because then it's there and there's no way of ever having it anywhere else um, so I figured uh, let's let's use the the old game object component system to sort of encapsulate it and we have this this game object components folder so these are the sort of the old style components if you will and then here in the modules we have the new ones so um, yeah since we're we're using uh, using CMake we need to go into the CMake list for the project. And let's see, where are where are the things that I want? They're right here. We can close some old stuff. So we have the CMake lists and we have the game object component sources. There's some stuff here that I I sort of feel that I might need in the future, so I've left them here from, from project slide. But let's create a new component here, and let's call it uh, let's call it simulation component. Right. So typically, the old style components are are all something component. Like here, I have these are very very old components. These things that they call they call logic. They should essentially be called game master component or game master logic component. Most of the time they're called something something component, um, and I, I figured the new ones would not be called that to to sort of tell them apart. Instead, they will be inside the Hermes components namespace and then just be called something transform in this case. So you can sort of tell them apart in the code. Okay, so simulation component. This is something that's going to live on the server side, and uh, and sort of host the simulation so we create the simulation component like that and uh, we just I mean Visual Studio could do that for us but I tend to, to like to actually do it by hand Right, and then, 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 we can probably just copy paste. Like this is the this is the, the kind of annoying thing with these old components is that they're so they're so big they typically have to. Like I could probably write this from from scratch and I would know it by heart, but it's kind of easiest to just copy paste the previous one. Nice thing with the new easiest ones is that they're they're very small. So for the old components, we need to have these macro macros here to actually register them into the system, and we need to give the name, and then we have like do we have exposed properties, and do we need export? Well, probably neither at this point. Uh, maybe we'll want to have exposed properties later, and, and they're essentially just members that we can we can uh, that, that can show up in the level editor. But let's not have them now. Uh, we can we can remove. Uh, maybe we want to keep the game session around. That, that that feels like something that could be quite useful to have at some point. Uh, message received. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, let's 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 remove the things that we don't need. Right. So we have a tick function, and that's very important because this is the tick that's actually going to tick the the simulation. So. Um, this thing is is not gonna 
this thing is going to be written in such a way that we can we can plonk it here right in the in the app itself but you can also leave it in the command line uh, which can just like tick it in a for loop or whatever so this this thing should not have any code that makes any assumptions of like how is this going to be updated but um, but in this case we have we have the simulation component this tick will get called whenever the game session is updated and not paused uh, quite crucially you can have an update as well here in the component an update gets called every frame of the of the application tick only gets called when the game session is not paused so when it's actually running and tick is also called at a fixed time uh, at a fixed rate a fixed tick rate which is currently set to uh, to one to, to 60 hertz to, to one one over 60. <clears throat> And so this should be everything we need currently. So we can, uh, what did we copy? We copied this one and let's just copy the CPP side and, and, and do the same thing here. Uh, so I'll just simulation component and just rename everything. Uh -huh. what, what did I do? Did I, did I cancel it for some reason? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll probably need the game messages, we don't need that, we don't need that, we probably don't need those. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna need. Let's leave the messages again, probably not the, don't need those. Hopefully don't need those. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, and I'm gonna leave the create here even though it just calls down to the base class same on the destroy because you almost always have to do something in those actually yeah we don't need the messages either because we we remove the on message function but i'm going to keep those around as commented out yeah yeah we should be able to just delete delete all of that so it's it's not not very not a very tricky component, uh, but these tend to be get kind of large after a while. Right, so here's what where, where we'll actually want to tick our simulation. So we can just we have to include the game object component base class header, and then we can include uh, sim simulation, and we'll we'll want one of these guys. So simulation m simulation oh let's it's in the sim namespace and we can just call tick and this is where we would we would actually input the the player uh, the player input uh, which, yeah, we might actually have to move this around a little bit at some point in the future too. Because this simulation component doesn't currently know anything about inputs, but it doesn't really matter right now. It's just something that we'll, we'll have to keep in mind at a later point. Uh, because like this is the client, this is obviously the the players, the, the, the thing that the player actually uh, interacts with. So the input is read here and then it's sent to the server. That system already exists and you can read it for a given player on the server. And if it's a single player game, it, there's just one player. Um, not in the simulation component though. That doesn't know anything about the input. But anyway, uh, it, it gets sent here and then it needs to be fed to the ECS somehow. So, so yeah, there's a there's a bit of figuring out there. But but for now it's fine. We have a simulation. Whenever we create this simulation component, uh, we can we can tick the thing. And just to test this out, let's just put here uh, uh, a, a print f ticking. Yay, ticking for glory. Move 
move some unnecessary lines there. Oh, we have some here as well. Doesn't matter. Okay. So that builds fun. But now if we run this, we're not we're not gonna get this this ticking output. Um, because we're not creating these these guys yet. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create a game object type. So we're on the slide project. Let's open up the Hermes project and go to our asset browser. And we can go here to blueprint. And we have gameplay blueprints. We have we have two two types already. So game master base. It has two components, uh, one of client endgame logic, which is created on the client, and one of server endgame logic, which is created on the server, unsurprisingly. Uh, I'm just going to create a new one here called gameplay uh, simul whoa. simulation. And uh, it doesn't need a transform. Uh, we can just copy this guy and put it there and we call this simulation and it is created on the server and nowhere else and if it's just one we can just we can remove the list like so and here we can you can in the properties you can specify properties if if the component has something called blueprint blueprint properties, you can get them sort of fed to you here, but we don't have that yet, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have a new game uh, object type called gameplay slash simulation. And we can see that our asset server here picked up on the, it's been updated. And so how do we actually get this into the game now? Well, we can actually go into the game flow, which was one of these things that I kind of, almost skipped over because it's not very interesting but these are the different states that the game can be in uh, and there are more like the, the game engine provides you with some that you can use loading screens and whatnot but if you want to customize them then then you'll want to actually use this you want to have have your own in the game project <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. So we have we have we have this create single player game state. We're currently in single player all the time. So let's not even think about multiplayer currently. On game joined, uh, if we're successfully joined the game, uh, uh, yeah, because this is, runs like on a multiplayer aware framework all the time. So we have these things where we need to change like. Were we actually able to connect to the game, even though it's a single player? And and here we can we can do all kinds of things. We can we can, we can push a layer. So if, if we're in client benchmarking mode, we just push the benchmark layer if there is one, and it will like bring bring all the objects on the benchmarking layer into the game. Uh, I used to benchmark performance in Project Slide, for example. But then we can create session objects and these are things that uh, are going to be created before any level objects are created and this is the perfect place for us to add our simulation so it's called a gameplay simulation so we copy it there and we need to give the object a name like the entity if you will it's not an entity it's a game object but still like it, it has a name so the we can refer to it if we want to. And I can remove the nav mesh tester. Right, so here's the default game master and then we push the simulation like we can see. Th there was the game master thingy. Um, and if, if we want to in the in the future, we can we can have it like the game master logic that, this, that it exists on both client and server. And like we can have the server like send notifications to the client if something happens or whatever, but and I think it's like nicer if it doesn't require any any of that stuff. So currently it just runs on the server. Cool. And now if we run the game, uh, 
we should see the simulating outputs here. Uh, but we're, we're not. We're not doing that. Why are we not doing that? Uh, let's maybe put a breakpoint there. Let's see if we actually go there. Yeah, it's jumping around in release mode. Alright. Alright, so we get those. But uh, don't we actually... Don't we actually get ticked? Uh, it's jumping around there as well. All right, so do we actually get called? No, we don't. Oh, I know, I know. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So we need to call set needs tick true so objects don't uh, don't activate themselves automatically you need to like tell tell this guy that, oh you need to actually tick like you're you're active now right there we go and now we should now we should be getting those yay the the ticking outputs okay cool so so it does it does in fact work and what we can do here to like make our lives a little easier is to so it's Hermes slash levels slash test level one bin level. And we can go to Hermes game. And add that here. So play level and then I probably already forgot what it was called. So let's just go quickly to Hermes data. And Hermes and levels and so it's the bin level file, right? What is the what is the resource name? Like that. So now now whenever we start the game, it should just go straight to to that. Uh huh. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe it wasn't called that. And. Um, Init client init game state. As you can see, this is uh, oh, it's actually not that. It's probably like post in it, right? As you can see, this is very much not scripted. This video, it's called play level. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh. Oh, I think I know what I think I know what I did. It's one of the annoying parts. Yeah, it's in debug. Why why can't Visual Studio just be like made so that it it selects I, mean, I know there's the active one and you can you can you select that, but if, if you're not on the active one, why can't it like not by default set the the one that you have. I don't know. Whatever. Now now it works. Cool. So we don't have to select the level every time. All right. So now we have um, we have the simulation ticking. Let's look at our diagram again. Just remove these uh, these red red ones. Um, right, so we have this whole um, this whole flow essentially working. We have the client, we have the server, and we have the ECS, and we have this ECS now ticking. So, what do we actually what do we actually want to do, and what do we want to do in this video? Um, 
maybe we'll want to go like we're making a game after all so let's try to make something visual that's always fun um let's make it so that we can create a couple of of entities here in the ecs and we can move them around and and the updates of moving them around sort of traverses all the way back like woo, so we can see we can see the thing here on the client on the screen that should be that should be challenge enough for one video um so some we, we somehow have to essentially make it so that this this tick function here can uh well it can do something and uh, the way I, I want to do that I think is is through delegates so this simulation essentially this whole this whole sim namespace here is supposed to be like frame framework code like you don't, you're not supposed to really put any actual gameplay code in in it um, you can you can think of this sim for, uh, namespace as as like a part of the of the game engine almost like if this pans out maybe I'll move it to a library so let's not put any gameplay code or any any like game specific code here at all. The stick function still needs to do something, um, and namely it needs to run the systems that we will want to have. And with the end framework, a system is essentially just a free function, uh, which then pokes at the entity data. So let's uh, let's import from the basis engine so use use this kind of include and I'll do is it external maybe and then it's fast that I get yes and we can go maybe we can go here or something like that and we do a type diff not type name but a type diff uh, fast delegate uh, let's look at what those what those looked like right so it's just fast delegate zero and void if 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 we don't take any parameters we don't return anything and i think that's what i want here like just the the very the very basic very most basic system let's call this basic system right and uh and here we can just do basis vector a vector of base oh not basis basic uh, so use the typing basis everywhere that I, I do that all the time anyway um, so basic systems so we just have like a, a vector of some things that we can call and the the easiest way just to do this is uh, probably doesn't need to be const. Probably doesn't need to be non-const. We have basic system s in basic systems, and we just we just call s. Like this would be the most simple way to to have tick do something. And of course, uh, we need to we need to make it possible to add and remove those systems. But uh, yeah, let's put them down here. I think add basic system. Uh, not sure this is actually going to be how I do it in the end. But uh, for now, it it will it will serve. Should it be should it be register maybe register basic system and unregister basic system yeah I think I think that will do right and M basic systems push or M place or whatever you want to use uh, we can go here and we can do we can do um, container helper and then we can just do erase if vector contains and we'll have the m basic systems and s like so all right i think that should be everything we need 
And since we have these undo and redo methods here, we'll probably want to actually have this tick sort of call, call down to some kind of other function that will then make sure that everything is run in the right order. And then we can have this, this especially this redo tick is almost like similar to the tick, except it doesn't take any input. It just reruns the commands and we'll have this will be much more complicated when we get the command system running. But but yeah, I, think, I don't think we'll, have, we'll use commands in this video. Uh, let's, tr let's just try to actually sync it with the, with the game object layer and have, have things actually like match up on the screen. Okay, I think this is actually what we want for, what we need for the simulation right now. Let's make sure that builds. And it does not, no. So that's probably because we'll need the basis namespace. And that was it. Okay, cool. So now then, what do we need now? Now we need some place to put the code. Uh, like we're, we're still here in the ECS world. We're not considering our, like this, this thing yet. We're here in the ECS world. And we want to actually uh, write a small test for ourselves. Uh, let's say we want to make two objects. And we want to spawn the objects and then we want to move them around and, and we want to somehow visualize them on the screen. We don't concern ourselves with this part yet. So how do we do that? Well, I was thinking that code like this would go into modules. And uh, if we go here, we have a folder for the modules. We already have a transform module. So that's, that's fine. Uh, and now we could create, uh, I would almost, almost like to like separate these kind of, this is like very much belonging to the, to the system as well, like a transform. And then we have these kinds of, like almost like gameplay code, like if you will, you can almost consider it like scripting in, in Unity. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually gonna, I'm, I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'll call them, call these new modules gameplay, gameplay modules, like so. And then this would be like, Framework modules or something. Yeah. Hmm. Or is it just like game modules? I don't know. Let's just put them in the modules for now. I'm, I'm spending too much time on that. We can actually just copy this guy and let's call it uh, just test module. Very, very easily. Right, and 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 um, and the test module will need to have uh, a system to move those entities around. But before we actually can move them around, we need something to actually create them. Right, so how, how would we create them? Let's think about that for a bit. So if we look at this, like most of the time the game will be running on this side, in ECS. So things will be happening here. And we have this is events bubbling up through this through this line here to the server. But when we're actually loading a level, uh, the the initial state will kind of come from here, right? Because that this is this is what the game uh, engine knows about. This is what the level editor knows about. So we need to create some like initial state in the old system and set up the ECS to go like, okay, so this is the, this is the level that these are the starting objects, essentially. 
And then once that is done, uh, the ECS can sort of kick in and start updating. So with that in mind, I think uh, right, we have the test module here. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll want to uh, go here and add them to the modules like so. So test module, wasn't that the name? Yes, it was. And then, um, then we want a game object component. So we want here as well, we want just uh, a test component. This is something that I'll probably like, won't, won't keep around for very long. But um, if we create one of these guys in the in the level, then what it will do is essentially it will run some initialization code on the entity side that would allow that will allow it to to create um, the objects on the ECS side. Yeah, I think that that makes sense because then we don't have to hard code anything anywhere. We have sort of like the the whole whole data path um, actually sort of working. And maybe we'll call this actually like ECS test, so that we just know what 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 test is this? It's like an ECS test, just to to test out the ECS system as we're as we're making it. So um, we'll be probably jumping between these game object components and the modules uh, a bit because because uh, we're sort of creating things on both side both sides of them. So we have easier test component, uh, like that. Okay. And then we just need to run CMake. Oh, 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 easiest test module. Oh, did I not, did I not rename those? Maybe I didn't. <clears throat> I did not. CMake is awesome. Never create C++ projects through Visual Studio again. So much nicer to be able to do it with this way. Okay, anyway, um, we can just comment that out so that we don't get any issues from having the same both sides. Right, so easiest test module. <clears throat> what will this what will this thing do? Um, it probably doesn't need any actual components. It will need a system and it will need like an initialization. Uh, initialization function. So we create like namespace for them as well. Like if you have init here, set up ECS test or something. Uh, just a just a regular function and and like this is where we would create two e entities and this would be like actual ecs entities right and then we have uh namespace systems oh. uh -huh. and this would be one of those basic systems that we created so update ecs test Ah, come on, like so. And so this will be this will get registered into the simulation, and uh, then this will get called from the old style uh, easiest test component, uh, like this this guy, which we need to rename to easiest test. So, oh, I keep doing that. What, what am I? What am I pressing? Actually, that's that's, that's weird. Like, do I need to press like enter, maybe? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> right. This doesn't need a tick. It just needs to actually like uh, kick off the 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 like start the test. Start the test. It won't have a simulation. It, 
Uh, maybe it needs a game session. I'm not sure. It doesn't. Nah. Maybe it actually needs to include that, but we can include it if we need to on the CPP side. Yeah. So this is like the entry point to our to our small ECS test here that we'll, we'll, we'll create, and uh, it will it will want to include um, modules, modules, ECS test module. And um, we don't want to call these probably, or do we? Want to call this is going to be placed in the level like one of these guys. So create and on parent created will get called at their appropriate times, but they will be doing during the loading screen, which is probably all right. So. Let's just put it here, so we can do. Uh, what was it set up? Easiest test, boom. Uh, and it was in it set up easiest test. Yes. So this is currently how we set up our whole. This is where our sort of custom logic now fires off. Okay, coolio. Now. How do we actually get access to the registry from here? So the registry is kind of like the core of the whole application. Um, so it needs to be accessible from like all over the place, essentially. And, and how do we do that? How do we actually make it so that, that we can access it from any from anywhere? <clears throat> That would be that would that would require a little bit of, of thinking. So we have the simulation component currently, which owns the, the simulation. And this is the guy that we need access to, because the simulation, on the other hand, um, has the the registry, and this easiest test module, this this thing here, which we might actually want to move to the CPP side. But anyway, this is where we want to create the, the two entities. And for, to create the two entities, we need access to the registry. And in the final thing, we'll want to handle those through the commands that we talked about, the simulation commands. But since we're not going to actually have that system working today, we'll just, we'll just give access to the registry. <coughs> uh, as is, yeah. I think we'll. I think we'll do that. We're. we're I'm. I'm gonna have to think about how I actually want that to work. But for now, let's let's do like hack, hack, hack. Registry. Actually, static registry. Oh, actually. No, we, we need we need to we need to have access to the simulation immediately because we will want to register the basic system. Yeah, yeah that's not great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, no, let's just be bad, bad people and and summon the singleton god. Like so, and then we'll need. Uh, this is some like basis. Basis singletons are a little bit more uh, advanced, perhaps than than your typical ones. So they use this. Uh, what's they call curiously recurring template, something or other pattern, uh, which means that we can actually we can create like these. We can create simul uh, sing a simulation singleton. Normally, but then we can't create another one. And it has these macros to make it a little easier. So it's like decal. No, it's singleton decal. Sim no. Simulation. And then it's also singleton def simulation. 
like so. Right, 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 right. Needs to be after those. No. Is that not is that not fine? What? Simulation is undefined. Of course it is. Of course it is. All right. So there we go. Now it should build. And it does. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is not great, but um, yeah, this stuff is gonna change anyway. So I'm not super worried about it. Okay. So simulation, like so. And so in the setup, we have simulation, and now we can we can use. Uh, we still need we still need that. namespace like this now we can call get and we get the simulation which will exist by the time this is set up easiest test is run because the simulation was added to uh, like to 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 here uh, and this code runs like way before the game has even started loading so we can register a basic system and we can just do address of systems Update easiest test. I think that should be fine. And we don't we don't really need to unregister it here, ever. Not not for this simple test. Okay. So now, now that we have this, uh, this will get called during the, the the ticks, and we can just write a com comment for ourselves here that uh, create two test entities here. So we'll get back to that uh, a little bit later. Uh, what we'll probably want to do is is um, actually let's do this. Let's do printf system ticking. So we'll have a new we'll have a new thing here that we want, actually want to see if this this is ticking. Uh, we can just get rid of the components for now because we don't need that. Okay, so how do we actually get this called now then? Well, it does actually already get called and it gets called from from here. Set up ECS test. Okay, so how do we actually get this to fire? Well, as you probably have imagined, we'll create a new a new blueprint. We can just call it game play. Actually, we have any development blueprints, not on the game side. Let's just put it here. Easiest test. It's it's pretty obvious that it's a testing thing. Easy yes. I think it's I call use that kind of actually I don't. Anyway, it it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I started it started a game. You can have this you can have the game running here as a as a preview if you editing some like 3d things I don't want that so let's just get again we'll want this only on the server and yeah and this is essentially needed just like the the only thing this component is actually gonna do is is run this one line here so it's kind of it, it feels maybe a little silly that we created a component for it but this way we don't have to uh, like hard code that call anywhere and I think that's that's probably right the right way to do it, so to speak. Yeah, and we can just remove everything except except that one. And we can probably even remove the the destructor, but uh, I, I tend to keep them around. <clears throat> yeah, we don't need those either. And this is like essentially like the 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 simplest possible component that still does something in in basis is right here okay so this should work uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what what
Mm -hmm. What's going on? Systems in a class or a namespace? That's weird. <clears throat> Is it just the fact that we we are using a thirty-year-old programming language and it doesn't know about it? Yes. Okay. <coughs> yeah, it might make sense to actually just put put the implementation of these in, in the CP on the CPP side. Um, so why don't we do that? Why don't we, why don't we actually? do just that because I would like the, the init to be first and then the systems to come next so we'll have void init setup easiest test like this and I'm gonna just copy that there uh, all right and do we need to, to have the whole path I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Oh, I copied the whole thing away. Yeah, like it doesn't doesn't like those for some reason. Oh, it's ugh, come on. I'm being I'm being bad. I'm being bad at what I do. All right, there we go. So now we have like we can have any number of units and we can have any number of systems. Uh, and now it should build. There we go. Okay. So cool. Our next task then is to get this system ticking to show up in the in the console over here. And of course, it doesn't do that. And of course, the way to do that is to actually go to Hermes, open. And we'll go to here and we'll go to Hermes data. And right, we have We've uh, updated the blueprints, go to levels and basis level. And the only thing we need to do is just add one of these easiest tests objects into the level like this. Yes, export. That's it. And we should have it. Let's see if it works. And it's ticking. Yay. Okay. So now we have the level is loaded. We have the ECS. Uh, test object created, which calls the init function on the on the ECS side. The init function or setup function. Maybe we'll maybe we should call it use the same same thing here. So it's an init namespace and it's called init ECS test. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, and. The init function registers a system, which is then ticking. Cool. Okay. So now we can finally turn our attention to this to this thing here. So actually creating the entities in ent or entity. It's a silly name for a very handy handy library. So how do we actually create things in here? You just call register create. And uh, obviously the problem is that we don't we can't actually access the registry yet, but I've I've, <laughs> I've seen this coming. Uh, so I've, I've actually already created that pre previously. So let's call that like reg and we'll have a simulation sim dot simulation indeed oh simulation get and get um, oh what is it called registry like so and this is probably like sim is it yes 
and here we can do like entity one is reg dot create, and that should work. That should build, and indeed it does. We've created our first ECS entity. How cool is that? So then, once we have an entity, we can actually start adding components to it, and components are uh, added with the in place. Uh, function on the registry. So we give the type of component and we give the entity uh, that we want to put it on. And then after that, you can give uh, like any number of initialization uh, parameters, like construct constructor parameters essentially. <clears throat> so uh, we only have one component currently. Transform module, we'll, we'll want that for sure, since we want to actually like move around the entities and, and see them move around. But we'll want something else as well, because that won't enough that won't be enough to like show them on the screen. So to get the objects to show up on the screen, we'll need to set up the system so that whenever we create an entity here we actually get like an old style game object that um, just represents like the visual part of the entity. All the logic and everything can be in, inside this this easier system and, and represented by this entity here. But the, the, um, the old style game object model will be the one that actually initializes all the meshes and, uh, and things like that. I could uh, actually quite easily write like an adapter for the graphics engine so that it could hook into this system. But uh, that would uh, require me to somehow sync the data from the server since this is running only on the server uh, to the client. And so I feel like that's it's probably a little bit overkill, at least for the time being, since we already have the data flowing uh, through this system here from the server to the to the client. Uh, it probably makes sense to to actually uh, leverage that, and that means that whenever we create something in here, if, if it is to actually have a visual representation or a physical representation, shall we say then um, we need to represent it using an old style game object um, in the scene. So the way I thought I could handle this is by using like um, an adapter of sorts. So uh, if we look here in the, in the end documentation, um, you can have have these kinds of things like when when we construct a position then we run a function or something like that so using that uh, we could uh -huh. we could do something like a registry uh and place and and we would want something like uh, components transform and uh, and then entity like this and of course we'll we'll need to actually we'll need to actually include that <clears throat> so we'll need that uh, but we'll also need something like a game object adapter something like this like a component that that sort of when whenever we create one of these guys, it will sort of automatically create a game object and sort of hook hook it into into this thing. Like if we look if we look here, um, the function prototype takes a registry and an entity, so we should be able to to uh, to like hook together. The, the game object using using this kind of thing. And so we'll probably have a game object adapter component here on this side and then similarly on the on the other side on the in the old school 
old style game object system will have a game object adapter component uh, with probably the entity uh, ID at least so that they can they can sort of talk to each other directly I think that makes sense so maybe we'll maybe we'll do that next um, so let's just copy this and we'll we'll create game of object adapter module dot h and one for the cpp side and we can go to <clears throat> and go to here and we can create this form oh not transform sorry uh, component like that uh, so that's sort of like their their representation on the other side of the of the line uh, so let's quickly add them here and uh, similarly here Uh, modules like so I, I hope this will this will work out I, I actually actually haven't done this I haven't rehearsed this or anything so let's hope it works out uh, and we can immediately include that and we can go here to transform module and just copy that and put it here and we'll call this game object adapter and um, this should probably have uh, actually it's it'll, it'll, it'll be a game object game object adapter component so that'll have a, a, a component to to the other side essentially like so and then we can go to probably uh, this is a good good thing to copy and we'll make it game object adapter component and now press enter before we press escape uh, right Right, right, right. We can take those away. Actually, we can take them away from here as well. Don't need them there. <clears throat> like so. <clears throat> Not exactly sure what what will what we'll need here at this time, but let's figure that out. So yes. And yeah, we don't need that and we don't have that and we probably don't need to tick either. Actually, I'm pretty certain we don't need to tick. Let's not let's not tick. Um just the the fact that you have a tick function actually generates some code on the engine side too to uh, make this a tickable object and it has has a tiny bit of overhead so it's always better to not have a tick function tick method if you don't need one for a component type of the old system right um, and this one will have um, not the simulation per se but it will have the, the, the types and constants and then it will have uh, is it like sim entity I think I'll keep that public for now. Uh, I think. And then I think this have oh, entity uh, like you can. I think there's a there's a null thing, isn't there? Mm. 
Maybe not. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's end null. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, now then, if this is going to be the, <clears throat> the way we actually access and update the game or objects uh, at least for now like whenever whenever an object updates here we need to somehow update the thing over here and if this is going to be the sort of entry point to that then we'll probably want to have a few more things here on this side so let's do like a, a basis and class transform component at least Um, I think that's that's probably something that is going to have. Um, yeah, and, and here we'll need to actually include the game object, and we can we can include the transform component as well because we'll probably want to actually use it for something. Maybe we can do get parent get transform component and I think this just returns null if it doesn't have one yeah it's it's an it's an inline inline getter so whenever on parent created is called all the components for this object will be created um, and that means that if it has a transform component it will, it will get a pointer to it here um, and yeah that should be basis like so. Mm, yeah, maybe this is actually enough. Maybe we'll actually just remove everything except except that. We can always put it back later if we if we need it. Try to keep these these old style components small as well. Okay, so whenever we create one of these guys. We'll want to create an object that has one of these guys. But since the object, the old style system works with these game object types that are represented by blueprints. These are all game object types. Um, we'll need to actually know what kind of type to create. And that's kind of uh, that's a bit tricky currently, um, and and we'll probably need to put in some kind of logic to figure out um, if we have an entity with three or four different kind of objects, uh, like a, a certain set of components, not objects. If we have an entity with a certain set of components, then you know uh, create this kind of object, and if we have a certain other set of components and create this kind of object, etc, etc. But uh, for now, let's just create, uh, for, for the sake of testing this easily, uh, just create an easiest test object. And uh, as for components, uh, it, will, it will have a transform, for sure. Uh, we can just we can just create it here. So let's do let's do uh, transform, and we'll type is basis transform component, and it will probably oh I'm missing a closing brace. It will be created everywhere essentially. So uh, why can't I actually? Uh, just create something. Okay, uh, just to so get this line here, and we can actually here we go. That is that is what we want. So that's our transform component, and then we'll want one of one of these. So game object adapter component. I'll just I'll 
keep it like that. And I think that's only to be created on the server. Like we don't need another client. Uh, there's nothing to adapt to anyway. And we don't need it in the, any of the editors. So that's fine. And maybe we'll actually create, I think we have a mesh component here to create like this. Uh, so these won't work. We need to put in some, some actual mesh here, but let's just, I think we have, um, what do we have? What do we have? Do we have any curve visualizer, cube map tester? Yeah. We'll want we'll want something to script, curve path, path animation, direction. Well, that has a mesh. The direction has a mesh. And that's kind of silly, but anyway, we can use we can use waypoint. That's probably fine, and we can actually just copy this whole mesh component. Uh, we just need to make sure that it's actually created in the on the client. So since this is actually um, an editor mesh, it's loaded from the editor pack, but that's fine because that pack will be available to us. It's not available in the shipped game, but or it's not, well, you can include it if you want to, but typically you don't. But it's it's typically not created on the client because then the waypoints would show up in the game. But you have the level editor and asset browser. We just added that one. So that should be fine. So now we can have it so that the, when whenever we create a game object adapter component in the ECS, uh, it just goes and creates one of these gameplay ECS test objects and uh, and that should be that should be good for our test so with that we can probably actually let's make sure it builds before we launch the editor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. oh all right yeah okay mm, game session we, of course, we don't use that for anything, but... Right, so let's see if this builds now. Nope, still no. All oh, right, uh, <clears throat> so transform doesn't have a default constructor. Uh, let's see how we actually want those to, to work. How, how do we do this? Can I can I do something like this? Right, does that does that solve the issue? No. But I probably want to. I probably just want to. Uh, what do I what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Do I just want to? Like, I mean, that should have a. Default constructor, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't have one. It doesn't do anything. It leaves it uninitialized. Uh, it's inaccessible, really. Oh, right. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, now we can probably just get rid of that, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was that was silly. Let's make sure that we have. Uh, I mean, these could be these could be structs. Uh, probably. Yeah, they could be structs. There's nothing really private about any of those math classes, but oh well. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> where were we? I'm got a bit, I'm got a bit distracted here. Um, right, so, 
So this guy. Um, yeah, whenever we create one of these these adapters, um, now of course if we if we go to easy errors, the easiest module, this should work, and it does. Um, so we need to somehow sort of hook up the logic which um, which creates the 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 old style um, game object whenever that gets created so how do we do that mm. I think we can probably uh, mm, mm, mm. let's let's look at the prototype for this. So the function is supposed to look like this. So it it, it would be like create easy as test object and um, it will take a well, this is essentially the same thing, but we'll have we have sim registry and we have we have sim entity e. So that's like whoop, red reg. All right. Um, we'll probably want to include uh, sim types and constants. something like that and then um, it should look something like this right so um, so if we have we have registry on on construct uh, components game object adapter connect no what 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 all ah, right I need to put it down there. So when we construct, uh, actually we don't want to we don't want to connect this here, right? No, no, no. This is this is not good. This is not good. Uh, we we'll want to hook up that logic in. Yeah, because this is sort of throwaway stuff. Yeah, it's sort of throwaway stuff. But uh, like I I would probably want to have an init function here. Uh, which because this is related to the game object adapter component and and there would be a function in this module which would then create the correct uh, type of object but since we don't we don't really have any except uh, this test easiest test object uh, like this this guy and uh, it is very goes sort of hand in hand with this easiest test module I'm just going to create and connect this um, this call here now and it can be moved moved elsewhere when we know where it is supposed to go so systems create ECS object I think it should be should be probably something like that and uh, I'll just put a note here like to do move to the uh, adapter module right Okay, okay. And here we have to do create game object. And uh, to be able to create a game object, we we need a pointer to the game state. So basis game state. Uh, this has a function called create game object, and you you fill in some parameters and. And you can you can propagate it, which we we which we want because that means that gets created here. We create an object here, and propagation means that it actually gets created on the client side as well. So this is what we want. Um, and uh, and 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 um, 
to be able to do that we have to get the game state well we can actually pass the game state to this function so let's let's do um, basis class game state so we just essentially like we, we, we pass it to this to this module and then then we just um, hold on to it essentially so this could be an unnamed namespace and and we can uh, will if we want to use it we need to actually include include the header and we'll have a basis game state game state let's initialize it to null and this is just we get a hold of it right and uh, then of course we need to pass pass it to, to that and that was done in the ECS test component here and we just call get game state like so let's make sure that builds All right, have a drink of water. Cool. Um, so uh, now then, if we call create game object, uh, we need to fill in something called the game object creation parameters object. Uh, and I think it probably lives here. Creation policy parameters there we go uh, geo params or something like that and then we, we pass it there and that will create the, the game object for us so what goes into this guy well it depends on what you actually want to do with the object uh, we'll probably want to get a name just because the game object creation um, is a little silly currently and it, it's probably overdue for a for a refresh like this returns a void because it was originally not uh, it was not guaranteed that the game object pointer would always be like the 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 game object wasn't always immediately created and so you weren't you weren't supposed to actually depend on that I'm not exactly sure that's the case in every single place in the engine, but, but this function, for example, you can clearly see that it, it just creates the game object there. So we can just re return the game object pointer there. Everything would be good. Uh, but I don't want to I don't want to do that now because of because of this. Like I I want the I want the um, the game object pointer so that I can um, I can get the component out of it and store it here in this in this variable this C here all right and um, so to be able to do that we'll we'll need to come up with a name for it and uh, I think we can there's probably a function to generate a, a unique name for an object and let's see where do we where's a good where's a good place to look for something like that play your params mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like if you um hang on. game state generate game object name yeah this is the this is the thing that i want that looks good. So we can go here to game state and we can. Uh, that's actually just G game state, generate object name, and that would be like ECS test or something. And uh, it will. Uh, there's a random part length, it's the number four. So it just tries to, to generate the name with that prefix and then add some random 
random crap to the end of it. So we can we can uh, actually it has some has some handy constructors. Um, so we'll want to we want the name, the type, but we also want the position and the orientation, and we want those taken from the uh, the transform. Okay. So to do that, how do we do? How do we do that? Well, uh, this should now be called uh, after the game object adapter has been constructed, and. Uh, I think we can see here that uh, listeners for construction signals are invoked after components have been assigned to entities, right? So we have the entity and we have the registry. So we should be able to get those components uh, for for the for the just created entity, so to speak. So we can call uh, let's do uh, components transform. That would be T, and then registry, um, get, and then components transform. I like to actually, oh, like, like so. Uh, I like to actually use, not, not use auto that much, but maybe maybe this is a place where I could use auto because I'm, I'm specifying the, the type right there. Mm, yeah, so that should be. I should have like a world matrix there, and and, and I do. So that's cool. Okay. Um, and uh, and then we also have um, we have the adapters that can be like I don't know, eh, adapter. Let's just let's just give them some reasonable names. And and that like so. So this should now be the the components of our just created ECS test object. Of course, we it sort of depends on on the order, the creation order of them here. But at this point, both of them should have the component available. Uh, and maybe there's a more sort of safe way to hook something like this up so that this is actually. Uh, this is gen. Um, this is run only when it actually has both of those components. Maybe actually, let's see. Can I? Uh, can I? Does this construct on construct take more than one? Uh, no. Currently not. But I think there's an there's another way to do that. But uh, again, it, this will work for our for our purposes. Okay, so um, so geoparams. Well, we can just create it like that, and then we can fill in these things. So we have the 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 name. Uh, it's called set name. Okay, we call that, and then we do set type, and of course, for now we only have the one type that we created. So just copy that and paste it in there. And geoparams set position, set, 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 set start transform. Yes. So position and and orientation. Um, so orientation is uh, is a little tricky currently because um, the transform. This one only has a, a, a matrix. And I could just copy paste the matrix to quaternion conversion function, but it doesn't really matter because we're not going to rotate them. So I'll just add a note for myself to do that. However, this this position thing maybe we'll actually want because um, FB matrix we're going to get the the uh, the position out of the out of the matrix. Uh, as a fixed point, so fp vec3. Uh, so let's do like like this. This will be fp vec3 start 
or shall we say spawn position. Um, and we can actually initialize it like this and then go transform Oop. world matrix T. Um, but FB vector trees are only used in the simulation side, not the game object side. So maybe we'll want to actually have a conversion function for this. So we'll do uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I probably don't want to include the vert, uh, the, uh, ah, maybe, let, let's just do it. I'm, I'm a bit rambly, I'm sorry, it's just, just, I'm kind of figuring things out as I go. I'm not super good at, at actually working and talking at the same time. So okay, we have a we have a um, member function here called to vec3, for example, something like this. It can be a constant and uh, that's not how I do things. And this should be as easy as returning a new vec3 with um, uh, let's think about this for a moment. I think this is like I can't, I can't do that. But what I can do is statically casting these to floats. And I think this is actually the the way that uh, that the FPL library sort of prefers you to do it. Like you need to, you need to clearly declare that I want these as floats give them to me as floats. Um, and that's supposed to sort of prevent you from accidentally doing it and, and introducing like non-deterministic behavior in your in your code. So that should be fine. And uh, as for the FB, actually we haven't included it, so let's do that. We want FB math and FB quaternion and we do spawn orientation and and this is probably can I do this I, I, I don't remember whoa no 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 um, Uh, fixed point, uh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I'll probably want to have have like some kind of identity constructor there, but but whatever. Let's just do it like this, and that should be fine. So if you're unfamiliar with quaternions, um, a quaternion with w as 1 and the rest of the uh, components as 0, that's essentially an identity quaternion, which means like no, no rotation at all. And now we should just be able to, uh, to do... Oh, we actually need the, the same thing here in the quaternion side. So... Uh, Let's just add that quickly. And math quaternion. Quaternion. And that would be quaternion. And we just need. Huh. Interesting. Actually, I can, I can, I don't have to specify bases there. I didn't know that was actually possible. Seems to be. <clears throat> right, so now I can do spawn position to vec3 and spawn orientation to quaternion. And I'll 
only two just I don't know uh, convert um, FP mat for three to FP turn in I'll add that conversion later right okay Oh, I can do it. It's just intelligence telling me that it's fine. Thought so. All right. Cool. And that should be it. That should be everything we need. Um, there is one thing that we could do still. Um, and that would be actually giving... Because this, this is going to create a game object, and the game object is going to going to contain one of these guys, right? And so an, an adapter component, and I would like the adapter component to to be assigned the simulation entity ID here, and this can be done with with something called a named parameter. You can just uh, what is it called? Add named parameter, and you can add like with a given name, you can add essentially. Well, anything, almost anything. <clears throat> um, but the thing is that I'm going to need the the pointer to the game object anyway, if I am to store it here in this, um, or rather in this adapter component here. So uh, I think what we're actually going to do, and this is a little bit silly, uh, but life is sometimes silly is that after we've created the game object we're just gonna get the game object and we're gonna get it with the geo params uh, no no get name so we're gonna get it back with the same name that we created it with and, and we can we're gonna assert here that the geo is something and now that we have it now we can go to uh, game object components and adapter component. We can call that C and uh, maybe give it a slightly better name, comp, and just geo get. Uh, oh, don't we have? We don't have it actually included. We can just go get component, and we get we get that component. And if we were really fancy, we could, I guess, even do an auto. I haven't used auto all that much. I typically use it with like iterators and things that tend to be very, very long and complicated to get right. But, uh, Easy as code bases typically use auto a lot, so I guess we're using auto here. Um, anyway, adapter comp, we can, we can make the same assertion here. Come on, there we go. And then once we have that, we can just go m entity is e. So now we're sort of hooking, um, cross referencing these two guys, and, and this is this is giving the the ECS identifier to the to the old style component and then we also do it the other way so we get do adapter dot C is adapter comp like so and uh, okay hmm What? Game object adapter component and game object adapter component. How how curious. Why can't I do that? <clears throat> Why can't I do that? I was going to do are unrelated. They they sure shouldn't be. Oh, it's because one of them is in Hermes namespace and the other one isn't, right? I think that's 
that's the problem here. Yes, okay. Right, okay, so that was that was quite a lot of code for very <laughs> very little benefit, essentially, considering this is mostly throwaway code. But anyway, it gives us a, a good test to, to like see, okay, does this actually make sense? So, um, now that we're creating entities, and especially if we're creating like two, like a like like I've I've said here, we should probably create them at different um, different positions, right? And so, um, as my math classes are kind of not that great, um, can we actually FP math four three? We can create like an identity matrix, yes. So let's just. Let's just do it like this, so that we we don't really care about the the rotation, but still let's let's be good citizens and create like so we we do we do entity one position uh -huh. position and and that's um, that's fp mat for three identity that should create an ident identity matrix and then we can do t. And uh, 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 uh. yeah, this is kind of silly. Again, more silliness, but uh, this is essentially like X Y C for the position. I haven't really fleshed out this FP math three. Actually, let's just do that. Let's go like, um, so we have the the math tree class, and this has a very handy uh, function called set translation, uh, and it also has init translation. And this is essentially what we want. So it, it sets the rotation part to identity and the translation part to whatever we give it. So let's just let's bring over this particular function method uh, but of course we'll want these to be fixed point and we'll want <laughs> we have to do the static thing all the way that's kind of nasty I'm not static cast. We can actually probably hmm, we can do like fixed point and then one. Right, that that should be fine. So these will be these will be ones. And then the other ones will be zeros. So yeah, this is the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm I have a lot of all of this kind of thing to do off camera, so to speak, to get get going with this project. But now we can now we can just do set or actually init translation. And yeah, so now we can do um, I don't I don't know I don't know what I want to do, but let's do like ten. Uh, and the y y is is like up or down, so that can be that can be. Uh, let's let's put them a little above the ground because otherwise I think they'll be inside the terrain. And then that can be that can be zero. Uh, mm -hmm. Which must have class type, but it has. What am I doing wrong here? Here. I'm somehow making that into a function pointer. That's. That's interesting. Uh, and then. I'll do that minus. 
So something like that. And then uh, and now we should be able to just give this to this, shouldn't we? I'm not actually sure. It does seem to work. We can't give that, right? That shouldn't work. No. Yeah. So that looks that looks correct. And then we do this, and we do this, and we do this. So now, with a little bit of luck, um, we should have two objects show up in the scene, and they should have the the. I should have this waypoint mesh, which basically looks like like this. We should have two of those objects show up in the level uh, where they are uh, essentially created from the ECS system. And we can't move them yet because this update doesn't do anything but print things. But that should be pretty cool if, if that works. Let's give it a go. Okay, uh, do we see something? No. Maybe I've, I've missed a thing or two. Let's, let's have one more look at that. And this thing here. Yeah, that looks... That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So we can do basis optimize off. I'm not sure about that whole thing. Is this actually gonna? Is that actually gonna run? But we'll see. Okay. So. So now, when we step one forward, we should go into here, and we do, yay! So that does that does run. Okay. And we have a name, which is something. Uh -huh. That's weird. What's what's the name? Object name. Oh, here we go. ECS, and then some random crap. And those look good. Okay. Start position looks good. Start orientation looks good. Yep. Yep. Alright. And we get a game object going. Everything actually looks good. So we should have the objects here. Why are they not showing up though? I wonder. Let's have a quick look in the editor. So where is this object sitting? Uh, it is at two point forty four. So that that should be that should be actually really good because the object should show up on either side of it. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, I know what's going on here. Um, so this ha this has nothing to do with ECS actually, or anything that's that is the topic of this this video. This is essentially um, we have this create game object here, and it takes a parameter called propagate, and uh, if this is set to true, then that means that uh, game objects created on the server will get created on the client as well. However, um, that's not true during the loading screen. That's only true when the actual when the actual game is is running, and the game won't be running because we'll be actually calling this from loading screen like we can see here the the call stack it's like update loading we create a game object and the game object creates something 
and we call init from here and then we create the thing yes yeah, so we, we will actually be creating those objects but they just won't be propagated to the to the client and that's fine that's absolutely fine because when you're loading a level you're actually supposed to go the other way not go from the easiest system down here and propagate it up towards the old system you're actually loading a level which is using the old style objects so you're, you're supposed to load the old style game objects and then create easiest objects from them because the, the data will be coming from like a uh, um, a level file essentially so no point in, in actually propagating those so what we'll want to do is uh, we'll see where do we call init easiest test uh, it should be in the old style component it's right here so let's make it so that uh, we we can like we can set up all of this uh, here in the init easiest test and we can get the game state even but we, we can't create the objects until the game is actually uh, like properly started so 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 what should we what should we actually we should copy it from somewhere we can just take it from game object component i think the base class which is big and huge and scary so we want this one and we want to we want to receive a message And like so, and we'll probably need to prepend these with bases, otherwise it's gonna be sad. And then we'll have to look at engine messages. So what we want is this message game started and it belongs to this category. So messages are split up into categories so that not everything has to listen to everything because that would be horribly inefficient. So we just say that uh, we subscribe to a message category. We're, we're, we're interested in messages belonging to this category. Uh, and we will get those sent to us. And yeah, this is a kind of a very low-tech way of handling messages. That's why I like it. I like it a lot. We don't need to scope that. Uh, it doesn't take any parameters. So that's it. That's what we need. And then we just need to split the, the creation uh, up into... Let's actually take this away and move it up in, in, in here into the into the name less namespace boom because we're not supposed to really call that from from outside anyway right that's just a helper function that like takes these two and, and creates a new object uh, I can take that away and we want want this and then we want something called uh, spawn test objects something like that And we'll take everything up to that point and put it into here. Right, right, right. What type name is not allowed? What, what, what? What do you want? Okay, it wants the registry. So we need to get the registry again. Yeah, again. Uh, like, obviously, we... we we would not be able to do almost anything that we're doing here um, uh, when we have the command system in in place like we we couldn't do this we can't do this we can't just create an entity willy-nilly because that's actually modifying the game state we would we would run it through a command that gives it gives it to us like it should essentially look the same um but it will just be like a slightly different 
API. So that's why I, I don't necessarily want to actually expose the registry at all because it's kind of, eh, I don't know, maybe. Um, and also we couldn't do things like this or things like this because we're just setting values. Those would also be uh, just run through a command. And that should be good. Actually, we could do, yeah, we could do this because we're just writing to the presentation layer. That's fine, but we can't do this because we're we're writing to to this guy here, and, and it's part of the sim. So, okay, and now we can then do in it spawn test objects, and that should work. So when when this object's parent has been created, we're subscribing to the message category. Actually, we can we can do it even before that. We can do it oh, right over there. Let the system know right from the front. Okay, we're interested in these values. Um, so it's initing the state, uh, and that just sets up this system for uh, for creating creating things and registering the basic system, which doesn't do anything yet. And then when the actual game has started, then we spawn two test objects. Now this should work. Let's have a look. And it still doesn't work. Wonderful. Um, okay, okay, <clears throat> yeah. Hmm, that's peculiar. Um, hmm. <laughs> that is very peculiar. Let's um, let's do something else. Then let's, let's put like a mesh component and. Uh, I can just put a breakpoint there. I think it should it should be hit even without any kind of right. So now we're creating creating one of them, and this should be this should actually tell us some that's uh, optimized away, whatever. <clears throat> but here we should see. Uh, I'm actually hitting it multiple times. Let's just make sure that we get the right one. we actually get the full name of the component here <clears throat> so we see which which objects mesh is being created and meshes only exist on the client so okay we see uv sphere mesh that's fine and now yep we got the mesh and we get the mesh so they do they do get created now they for some reason they don't they're not visible maybe it has to do with the with the actual mesh that I chose for this maybe it's a bad pick it's possible we should see it quite clearly from from under there so okay, we don't we don't need that. Let's let's try to find a better mesh to use. Uh, problem is that we have almost no meshes at all in this. In this project yet. Development blueprints, yeah. Engine. Uh, do that actually. Uh, if we if we don't disable it, we have like a a beautiful cog. Maybe, maybe that would be maybe that would be all right. Uh huh. What happened? 
some reason my editor is. Oh, there we go. I'll just oh. disable that again. Okay, let's try with the let's try with the cog. So client level editor asset browser it should be should be visible like should be clearly visible from everywhere. But it still isn't. Okay. Hmm. That's quite peculiar. Why why is that happening? Um I'll just I'll just pause this and figure this out. I'll be back in a sec. All right, so I I just found the issue. Turns out it's this line here. So we have W, X, Y, Z, and we only initialize W, Y, and Z. So, whoops. Uh, let's put our dear friend X there as well, and that should that should fix our woes. Uh, yeah, let's have a let's have a go. All right, and that looks much better. Okay, yeah, the the spawn points would have worked as well, I'm sure, but but we can use these these cogs. Um, so they appear uh, at at the at the right place because uh, that disappearing ball or sphere is at uh, or it's above world origin, so the world origin is is like right here underneath it on the terrain. So you have minus x and x, or other way around. I'm not exactly sure which which way uh, positive z is here, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I guess I guess we can find that out by actually start moving them around. So that would be the next thing, and, and probably the last thing for this video is is making it so that this ECS update, ECS test update does something. Um, so, but yeah, let's have a let's have a quick look at at what what we currently have. So, um, actually, I think I think I can probably just remove that as well. I had a test there to make sure that there's not like a timing issue thing or anything like that causing those issues. But no, no, they show up show up exactly where they should so that's good we can get rid of that and we can get rid of the host cool okay so now that we received the message that the game has started we spawn the test objects and we call this and we we figure out the, the positions uh, and spawn them and we push the the objects and components so that they get a transform, and we we pass pass the transform uh, along, and then we add the game object adapter, which causes this thing to call this function, and that allows us to actually uh, then create the 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 object on the game object side, and so uh, <coughs> now in the in the up, uh, system here, we should be able to just um, get a list of all the all the entities that have a transform and a game object adapter. And the, since the game object adapter now has has this, uh, uh, this this C here, which is a, a pointer to the game object adapter component, uh, maybe we can add a, add a better name there for it so adapter component something uh, we should be able to just use that pointer to move move the object around um, according to where it is in the ECS so that should be good and when we do that we're, we're essentially taking what it, whatever is in the ECS and we're, we're pushing it to here and the transform component then uh, can handle the whole uh, network serialization thingy for us, uh, even if these are on, on different machines. Okay, so that's cool. 
um, to iterate over things uh, we we will use a view I think so again this this is the crash course for the entity component system and we can look at uh, at, at, at at views let's 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 do a view so uh, so we could do something like this where we we get a view by the components that we're interested in and then uh, we can just iterate over them so let's do that let's 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 start with that so we auto uh, view oh auto view is um, and we'll we'll need unfortunately this thing again now we can get rid of that one so registry and oh come on and view and we are interested in components dot transform and components game object adapter so for auto uh, n entity in the view uh, we can essentially do this and that would be that would be entity and um, we should actually be able to let's see oh not that should be able to do something like this which is using the new uh whatever it's called the is one of the new um c plus plus syntaxes that allows us to do like transform and uh, oh nope adapter equals view dot get entity So this 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 will now uh, this first parameter here or whatever you want to call them uh, sort of binds to this one and the second to to that one uh, etc. Um, yeah, I think that should work. So so now we can just do uh, I don't know transform. Come on, it's on function world matrix and uh, <laughs> so this will get called every tick all right okay okay um, I need to I need to learn how to properly use the fixed point library but let's just let's just uh, do, do something to prove that the system is working so uh, we do fix it point. I think we should be able to just do like something like this, right? No. Oh, we have to. We have to. We, we can't assign it, but we, we can construct it. We can initialize it with a float, right? So since the delta is uh, one over sixty, uh, if we move them, shall we say upwards uh, by movement, then. Uh, it should move one unit up per second, so that should be that should be pr pretty good. Uh, and we can, we can make it like half of that, so two units per second, right? And then we have fixed point, so this would be like y, the y component, and that would be t and one for for the second one. Again, I, uh, I'm gonna have to add more more methods to the matrix. And then we do y plus equals movement and we we poke it back something like that actually maybe we can just do can 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 we actually just do this i think we can then we can get rid of that so now they should be moving two units two world units up per um uh, second and so that's cool but uh, of course we 
we don't see anything here because uh, we're not actually updating the the game object representation. We can get rid of those, and uh, we should be able to. Uh, mm -hmm. One minute. So we have the we have adapter. And it has an adapter component. And from this we can go like, okay. Get me the parent. Get me the transform component. Except that's already called transform, so we have to just call it T or something. Uh, let's do game object. Transform. I mean, this is not super performant programming like this. We're just going through lots of pointers, but uh, just to just to sort of see if it works. So uh, this will have a. Uh, we have to set the transform like this, and it's a it's a game object transform. Yes. So we do basis game object transform let's call that component so then we can just use this name here and that would be game object transform component get transform and um, and this will now be then position dot y equals and we have to do the static cast between fixed points and floats again so essentially like this, that thing, right? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll make just a, I'll make a, a, a helper method for just syncing these. So you don't have to do this all the time, but for the time being. Um, and then we have to just poke it back in. Set transform, and that will be just game object transform. All right, let's see if it works. And there we go. And now if you press P to pause the game, uh, the ECS stops stops updating because they'll move around. The ECS uh, is not updating anymore, so nothing happens. And we'll press P again, and they and they move move around. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, and and with that, I think we've We've accomplished what we set out to do uh, for this video. So uh, obviously, lots of things to do still, but uh, I'm kind of happy with how this turned out. Considering that I'm, I'm really just I'm like doing the work. Uh, I'm, this hasn't been hasn't been rehearsed or even tried before this. So there were lots of little things to. To figure out and, and and things like the the you know this the, the bug with the missing x coordinate here and things like that so uh, with all of that i i feel like we got a pretty good start and this easiest test module module uh, as well as as this easiest test object and 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 this object here that just sort of kicks everything off uh, these are all going to go away obviously like these are just just here to to sort of prove the the concept of this of this whole chain and uh, it seems a little silly now to build it like this because we have to like cross this boundary all the time and and, and do you know do things like this but uh, it's worth keeping in mind that that lots of gameplay code can actually live completely on the ECS side like everything that has to do with like AI or uh, yeah, even some even some physics calculations can just be done there um, and then, you know, physics like like the movement of characters, for example, can just stay completely on the easiest side. And then when we've essentially resolved the position of, of something, we just we just push the matrices over. Um, so we don't have to cross that boundary all the time. And uh, that's that's kind of where the easiest uh, system will come into its own right when it can just. Um, 
it can just stay in its own world most of the time and then just occasionally flush something out to that side. And of course nothing prevents us from 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 doing things then on this side as well. So if you have if you have like an object um, you know let's say you had uh, you had some like sparks or something like coming off coming off these these guys here and falling to the floor and, and, and colliding with it that that could all just stay on the the game object side and, and perhaps even even be client only without the easiest having to deal with that at all it's kind of a nice nice split of responsibilities essentially uh, and certain things such as using physics for example is, is obviously only only possible currently on this side well, I mean, you can do them. You can do them. You can use physics here if you want to. You can even set up like a a scene uh, only used by the ECS because you can have multiple physics scenes. But uh, but that system is kind of ready to go only on this side currently. So that kind of stuff kind of makes sense to keep on the game object side for now. But uh, anyway. Uh, I think that that does it for now. This was kind of fun to do, fun to do on video. I'll probably do more of these things on video in the in the future. And uh, with that, I leave you with the usual wishes of liking, subscribing, clicking all the buttons, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.